Now I would like to think about how do dielectrics behave when we polarize them. So this is now a dielectric, and let's put a positive charge over here. With that positive charge here, can you tell me what will happen inside the dielectric? We will polarize all of the atoms inside the dielectric, right? This electric field goes right across the sample. So inside here, we will have a whole bunch of atoms, and they will each become polarized into dipoles. So we will now have a whole collection of dipoles. Now let's stop the dielectric there. How many dipoles inside the sample? How many? Oh, okay. <laughs> Good, okay, that's definitely one answer to the question. <laughs> now, we had our little piece of paper, right? Yes. And inside there we polarized each of those atoms. How many dipoles were there in that little piece of paper? Number of atoms, which was? 25 times 10 to the 20, I think. Okay. Is that a large number or a small number? That's a huge number, right? If you just try to count that far, if you start counting one, two, three, you won't live long enough to count that far. So that's a, that's a huge number of particles. What we can do using the superposition principle is we can write down the potential for each dipole, and then using the superposition principle to get the total potential, we can add the potential for each dipole, right? But there's so many terms that doing the sum is ineffective. So instead of doing the sum, what should we do? Turn it into an integral. So what we're going to try to do now is write down an integral expression that will describe the electric field of all of these dipoles that have been polarized inside the sample. If we want to write it down as an integral, can somebody suggest what new gadget I'm going to have to invent? So, so, when, so I want to write an integral and to be able to write an integral for the, for the potential from all of those dipoles, I'm going to have to introduce something new. Now, before when I had point charges, I introduced the charge density. And what was the charge density? If I took the charge density, rho, let's maybe say r, d3 r, what is this? This is the amount of charge in a box of volume D3R and where is this box at? R. So that was the charge density. And using the charge density I could break some continuous distribution of charge into little pieces. I'm now going to break this into little pieces, but what density do I want? Yes, Thorsten? I think uh, uh, for, for the subdivision by unit so, Okay, so polarization per unit volume, okay, so, so we're going in the right direction. But, but, but why did we say charge? Why did we say we want charge here? That was because what was the potential from a point charge? Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r. What determines the potential of a dipole? The dipole moment. So it's the dipole moment that we need to write the potential of a dipole. So what density should we be writing down? Density of electric dipole moment. Absolutely. So we introduce P. 
of R. This is called the polarization. And I'll tell you what it is. If you take P of R and you multiply by D3R, so by a little volume, this is the electric dipole moment of a box of volume D3R at position R. So that's what the polarization is and this is what's going to allow us to write down what is the potential for this collection of charges. So let's just remind ourselves of um, the potential due to an electric dipole. Um, <coughs> If we have an electric dipole at the origin, okay, and we want to know what is the potential at some position R, this is the formula that we wrote down already. Okay? And we said V of R is equal to, we still have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, we will have R hat dotted into the electric dipole <coughs> moment, and then what power of R was it? R to what power? 4, 2, 3. For 3, for the potential? Four. What power? Oh. What power is it for a point charge? Four. 1 over Four. R, right? So there's a partial cancellation. The potential for a dipole looks like 1 over R? Squared. Good. Okay. So that's the potential at position R for a dipole located at the origin. But we can shift this dipole away from the origin. Now let's locate our dipole at the point R prime. That's where our dipole is. We want to calculate the value of the potential at position R. All we have to do is shift that result over there. So what do we get? We get V of R is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught R minus R prime dot P over the mod of R minus R prime cubed. Is that formula okay? That's squared. That's cubed. Ezra, is that correct? Good. That's a unit vector, that's not a unit vector. Okay, so that's why there's an extra power in the denominator. If you put R prime equal to zero, this formula becomes that formula. So that's your check that you shifted in the right direction. When R prime is equal to naught, this goes into that. If we have a collection of dipoles, we can use superposition principle. So, for a collection of dipoles, V of R will be equal to a sum from I is equal to 1 to N, the number of dipoles. We will have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We will have R 
minus Ri dotted into the dipole moment of the ith particle divided by the mod of R minus Ri cubed. Now, I want you guys to write the formula for the case that we've got a continuous distribution of dipoles in terms of the polarization. So try to write the formula now for the case that we have a continuous distribution of dipoles described by some polarization. Okay guys, let's uh, write it down together. So the sum becomes an integral. What happens to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught? Nothing. Good. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught stays the same. Then we have got r minus, I'm going to write this as r prime. This is the thing that we're going to integrate over. When we were doing the sum, we sum over the ri, right? That's the thing that's changing. So when we do the integral, that's going to become the integration variable. And I've decided to call that r prime. And then I need to dot this into the small dipole moment of that little box. But we know what the dipole moment of that box is. It will be P of R prime D3 R prime. So that is what replaces P. And now we divide by the mod of R minus R prime cubed. Everyone happy with how we got that? Is there anyone who's not sure about any of the steps? Okay, good. So we're going to take that expression and we're going to manipulate it. So this is an expression that will tell you what is the potential due to all of the little dipoles inside this dielectric. Before this section, we never had to study a dipole. We were always studying just charges, monopoles, right? Just one pole. So we've got a lot of techniques developed for dealing with single charges, monopoles. So what we usually do when we study electric fields and matter is we manipulate this formula. We change it until we've got the formula again for just charges, monopoles. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to manipulate this formula and write it in terms of potentials just from charges. And we're going to introduce the language that people usually use, which is, they, they usually talk about bound charge and free charge. And we'll talk about what those are. I think that now is a natural place for us to stretch our legs. So let's take a 10-minute break and we'll continue after the break. <laughs>